Okay, so part one of the modelling tutorial for uh, our first in-game asset is going to be uh, looking at modelling the fire extinguisher that we've uh, we've already looked at. So just to uh, go over the user interface a little bit, um, up here, this uh, this little button here, this is the menu sets button. So we can actually choose the different menu sets that we've got. So I'm going to change that to polygons before we start. Um, I'm going to set up a project, so I've got the project window, turn on new project and I'm just going to call this fire E and leave everything as default and click accept let me just look for a little confirmation down here and it just comes in here so you'll see that we've just made all these new nodes all these new nodes have been made and uh, if we go to the documents folder we should see that under the Maya projects window there is now a Fire E project with all those assets being built into there. So we're just going to keep this up for a second because uh, we need to get a little bit of um, data off the internet. Now I've already put up a uh, a picture. We're just going to take the Google search. Uh, there's already a picture up there, uh, which is, I think, of this one. And this one will do. And we'll just right mouse click, save the image as. And this picture is going to go in to that Maya folder that we've created. So we have projects, Fire E, and it must go in source images. Make sure it's a JPEG, makes it nice and easy for us. It's downloaded. We can proceed. I'll we'll just check see if it's in there. There it is. Okay, so we have the new project set up. Uh, we would set up normally set up the uh, the units. Uh, so that's the next thing that we need to have a look at. And these can be found under the window settings and preferences preferences menu. And in there we've got a settings menu, and we can change the units to meters. And click save. And we need to have a look. You notice that we've zoomed quite a way in, so let's just go and have a look at that camera. And we'll see that the camera has now got a far clipping plane of 100, so we'll just put that to 1000. And I'm going to hit Shift and F. And what this will do is it will reset all these windows. Uh, but again, if we look at this camera, this camera, as you can see, is only one unit above the ground. There it is. So it's a good idea to put this 100 units above the ground. And if you do this for all the cameras, select the camera, put them all 100 units instead of one unit. And this one as well. And what you also need to do is, if you look at this camera, set the clipping planes to 1000. Now there is a script on the internet that will do this for you. Uh, it's press press one button and it fixes all these problems for you. Uh, but you need to know why you're doing it. So the clipping planes have been set so that our images and our our objects won't disappear. Okay, so moving on. Now we've got this four view set up. We can begin to bring in our image plane, which is going to go in the side window. So we're going to blow up the side window by just tapping the space bar. There's the side window. And I seem to have a little bit of a, a lag on the screen there. Let's bring in the image plane. So we're going to go view, down to image plane, import image. And under source images, we have our picture. Let's zoom out of this picture, so just dolly out. And I'm going to make some changes to this picture. So the first thing we're going to do is if we look this picture and be set up in all views and we'll just change the alpha game down so we can see this because we've set this to a different um, uh, a different uh, actual uh, unit size this is not going to be picked up by the image plane in, in the center but the alpha game works fine uh, we're going to move this back, so we're going to go to the image center. So the image center is set to 98 back, so let's set this to 
I don't know, uh, 20, so we'll be able to see it probably better. So it should be 20 units back, there it is. So you can see it's 20. It wants to actually be on the minus side, minus 20, so it's on that side. And this means that any objects that we're building in here, we will we will see them, all the, all the units and everything. We're going to set this to a height of 2. Okay, doesn't want to be more than 2 meters high, this, so set to about 2 meters at the moment. Let's set it to uh, probably 1.25. So we've got it quite small. And we'll drop this down to about uh, zero. So it works on absolutes, as you can see. So then we can nudge this up by 0.6. Set it on the floor. And we've got a one meter tall um, fire extinguisher, which is pretty, pretty tall fire extinguisher, but we can scale it back a little bit, probably, when we've finished. OK, so there we have it. It's over there, oh, so it's going to be. We can always measure it up, but uh, let's just turn off looking through all cameras. So we've just got a clean scene. Okay, so moving in, we can begin to start modelling now. The first thing I normally do is, once I get to this stage, I will save the scene. So I will go save scene as, bring up my scenes directory, and I'm going to call this my scene setup. Fire E. So if anything goes wrong, I can just reopen this and I've set all those settings and everything works fine. Okay, so I don't have a polygons menu, so I'm going to use Control and Shift and go to Create Menu and create a polygon primitive cylinder. And I've dropped that to the shelf. I've dropped it twice. I'm going to mouse drag that to the other side. I'll click on this. And we'll click and drag. And if you look in the side view at the same time you can see this green line here as I'm looking at it. So I'm dragging in, I was dragging in that window but I was looking at this line here and then I'll drag up and I've made my first cylinder. Okay, so I'm going to go to my channel box to my inputs and I'm going to change the subdivisions to 16. I don't want more than 16 in there. Okay, so let's press F and frame this up. There we go. Um, moving out a little bit. So we want to add a bevel. Okay, so I'm just going to shade this using OpenGL shading. Let's go and add a bevel. So I've already dropped the bevel to my shelf. So let's do that. Let's make sure we're in polygons in the menu set. Go to the menu and go to Edit Mesh and hold down Control and Shift and just click once on bevel. That drops it to our shelf. So it asks me and I've beveled everything. So what I need to do is I need to go right mouse click. I've just undone that what I did. I'm just going to right mouse click, select this top edge with a double click, and then hit the bevel button. And we see we get this huge mushroom shape. And this is because the bevel is set as a fraction. Let's set this to off. That's a zero in there. And it goes off. Okay, now that fraction is still too high, so we need to set this fraction down to a point one. And you see we've now got the bevel looking somewhere reasonable. And then we'll change the segments to three. And you can see that we've now got the top bending over uh, pretty much in the same sh shape as the top of the, the fire extinguisher. Now if it's not close enough, you can just select all those vertexes and scale them in the Y direction just to shorten it a little bit. And then select the object again. Okay, so moving on, that's given us the basic shape. Let's make the neck of the bottle. So I'm going to double click on this edge ring here and scale this in. Okay, so I'm, I'm working quite blind here because I've not quite lined up my my image right. So that's about right. I'm going to select those faces in the inside using the paint select tool. Select faces. I need to click off that first because I've got the faces selected, I've deselected those that I had. Now I'm going to use the extrude tool, which looks like this one. I'm just going to pull this extrusion up and that's created the top of the the neck of the cylinder. I'm going to also use the edit mesh insert edge loop tool 
near the bottom to just create this extra lip around the bottom and then select these faces and just going to extrude those out as well just pull them straight out with the blue arrow it gives us that little lip that's probably too much detail than we needed but it'll look good next thing to do is create the nut that goes on the top so we're going to use the cylinder tool again uh, oh just before we do this let's just use the select tool we're just going to set this back use X and click to snap it back to its center point in the top view and then we can go on and do the nut so just going to drag the nut out build this now starting the top view and this will automatically go down to the the base so we're just going to guesstimate where that is just change the inputs to 8 so we can have a sort of a nut shape and we'll just drag this up and just place this sort of where we think the nut's going to go I'm just going to scale use the scale tool just to get it to the right sort of shape there we go that's about the right shape and now we're going to build this uh, this handle system at the top so the easiest way of building this would be to use a create polygon cube we've got a polygon cube here we're just going to drag out in the side view the length of it and then in the top view the width of the handle and it automatically you see gives me a, a center point so I'm going to use X and the X key and then snapping X bring it back to center and then I'm going to divide it so I'm going to use my divisions across the depth to put sort of through four divisions in and then I'm going to use right mouse click vertex selection which you've got the move tool on and I'm going to drag now I'm dragging across as you can see there's quite a big square and this is because I want to drag over both the front and the back if I just use this if I just click on this I only select the front one which can cause problems so drag across both and then position both of these and then the bottom side dragging these up into the right place I'm just going to move this across so that this is in so the center point and I, I think I'm, we can probably see that this is this is going round here and there would be a, 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 um, a sort of a connector in between those but for the detail that we need to use we can just use this down here so let's select the bottom of this and we'll extrude this down just pull this down a little bit and let's extrude it again pull it down a bit further and just position this into the right place so using the vertexes again and the move tool just get those into the right place and then we can extrude from the back of the handle down we'll extrude this the right length and add some divisions three divisions which sort of gives us the same sort of setup as the top and we can position those into the right sort of position as well so there we go we've got the handle more or less designed it's only got to be the, the flavor of the handle now what we'll do is we'll take the faces that are on the top of this bit here and we'll select this right mouse click and face select all those faces and we're going to extrude those we're going to put a an offset on that so if we use the offset tool and then extrude again and just pull the blue handle up so it goes into the handle at the bottom and I can see that this is not actually quite wide enough so I'll select this object and I can actually make this scale bigger to cope with it okay now if I want I can actually scale these as different things so we could actually scale the handle to look slightly different 
towards the back. And again, we're starting to add more detail to the actual object. Last thing to look at then is how to make the hose pipe that goes into the bottom bit. Two ways of doing this. Number one would be to use a cylinder, a very long cylinder, with lots of divisions up the height. So let's say 10 divisions, which gives me all these little divisions. And I'll just make sure I drop this down to say 8 because I don't want it to be too complicated. And then I could use the move tools and the rotate tools. So it's using W and E as the quick keys, move tools and rotate tools to just reposition and reshape the hose pipe. I want to lock this in X. This is a bit of a long way of doing it, but it will work. That's the beauty of it. Sometimes the simplest way of doing something is the best way of doing something. Okay, we're just going to move this one up. Move this one across. Just so we can see how, m how much space we've got to work with. Nearly there. This is why we used 10 divisions and not 100, which would have given us a very, very smooth there we go, and we can see already we can see that they're flipped over so we need to flip those back there we go and we've got the hose built and there we have it uh, there is an easier way of doing it, um, but by doing it this way, I mean we can go in and change the radius still. Uh, but although there will be some issues with that, I might just be able to change it to 1.5. There you go. And there you are, that works. So that can be saved now. File, save scene as, and we'll bring up the save scene options. It's just reading off the internet, off the network. There's our setup scene, so let's call this one model. And then we've got a model built. So the next tutorial we'll do will be adding materials to this. And then the final tutorial will be adding textures 